Hello, and welcome to Atlas MD. My name is Kirk Umber, and in this video, we're going to be showing you a brief high level overview of the Atlas MD EMR. So, we'll go ahead and start from the login page. Everything is browser based, so you can log in from any device on any browser. And multiple staff users and doctors can log into the same account, all with their own email address and password. So we'll go ahead and log in. And the uh, easiest way to kind of demonstrate this is to start from the beginning, from when a patient is first signing up online, to getting them in the system, setting up their subscription, and then walking through the natural course of a patient visit. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the enrollment. So uh, your Atlas account comes with its own online enrollment form that you can copy and paste onto your website. So this is our clinic website in Wichita, Kansas. And so you can have a button that says like sign up or get started. And then patients can go ahead and start filling out all of their intake paperwork. So their contact information, past medical history, uh, consent to the clinic forms and their credit card information for billing. So they'll fill out all that information. It ties back to your actual Atlas account. And then you'll get a notification that there was a new enrollment um, and an unconfirmed enrollment. And then all you do is hit confirm and all the information they filled out will go into a brand new chart. So they're uh, on this left sidebar, all their medical history will be in there that they filled out, um, their contact details for um, calls, texts, emails, and video chat. So it makes it very easy to onboard uh, new patients because they're filling out all the information and it's coming to you as a completed chart. Once the patient is confirmed, they will get an automatic welcome email and you can tailor this to say anything that you'd like. But what a lot of docs will do is include their um, Atlas phone number and their email address. So part of the included features is this, uh, the phone services, which allow you to set up a uh, a pseudo cell number and that will route back to your actual cell and then sync the text messages to the patient's chart. So as far as patients are concerned, this is your actual cell number. They'll treat it like it's a normal cell. And uh, meanwhile, it'll come to back to your actual cell and sync with the patient's chart. There's also an Atlas MD mobile app for uh, communications. So if you prefer, you can have that sent to your uh, the Alice MD mobile app and it's a little bit easier to manage the uh, conversations in there and keep your work text separate from your personal text or if you prefer you can just have them go to your normal text messages as well so um, so once you created the number it's always a good idea to include that in the welcome email so the patients have a way to contact you in a way that syncs the text messages to their chart and then for your email account, you would just use your existing uh, work email and just connect it to Atlas. So that way, anytime you have emails back and forth with the patient, those get automatically synced to their chart as well. So you'd be pretty hard pressed to have a remote interaction with a patient that wasn't automatically documented in your chart. All right, so after we've uh, confirmed the patient, they received the welcome email. Normally in our clinic as a first step, we'll just go ahead and set up their subscription. So there's a few different ways you can do this. There are uh, some default pricing sets you can uh, set up. Age-based is most popular and uh, the most streamlined. So usually less for uh, younger adults and more for older adults. And then patients will get automatically placed into a subscription tier and then that'll increase as they uh, age into new tiers. You can also do fixed rate prices. Uh, so maybe you have a family max or you're doing a couple's discount and things like that. So uh, lots of flexibility, whether it's based on age or level of service or number of people that are enrolled. So <clears throat> once their uh, subscription is set up, uh, normally we'd go ahead and do a prorated charge for their uh, the initial month that they sign up. And uh, you can do this a number of uh, different ways, uh, but basically you can just do charging for prorated membership. And you can go ahead and take uh, a uh, add the charge and take payment for it on the spot. And so you're knocking out two birds with one stone. And um, the credit card and billing and everything is all integrated into Atlas. So the processing fees for credit cards and debit cards uh, is 2.1% plus 30 cents per online transaction. And that's what they call a blended rate. So that it means that no matter what type of card it is, um, American Express, HSA, FSA, anything like that, there's uh, no difference in price. It's always 2.1%. And then you can set up uh, bank accounts to do uh, ACH payments or direct drafts from patients' uh, banks. And uh, those are a little bit cheaper. Those are just a flat 25 cents uh, per uh, payment. 
but those they just take a little bit longer to process. It's about seven to 10 days, whereas the credit cards are uh, two to three days. So credit cards are a little bit quicker, but you have the percentage, and then the bank accounts are a flat 25 cents, but they just take a little longer. So, um, and then once you've got the patient's subscription set up, they're on auto charge, they've got a card on file that they provided to you from the online enrollment form, uh, then uh, it's pretty much good to go. Each month they'll get charged their membership fee plus um, any incidentals they had, like maybe medications or lab. And uh, that'll get automatically processed and then deposited into your bank. So, all right, let's go back to the patient's chart and uh, let's say we're ready to go ahead and schedule the first visit. So you can do this a number of different ways. There's a, a main uh, calendar section you can do this or you can do it right from the patient's chart. And uh, there's appointment reminders that are sent out based to the uh, on the patient's preference, so whether that's text message or email, and uh, you can include a custom message to be included with that appointment reminder. So maybe they need a reminder to fast for 12 hours prior to their appointment for labs or anything that you want to include, you can add that in there. So uh, they will get the uh, appointment reminders uh, leading up to the appointment. And then let's go ahead and fast forward and say that we're, uh, we're here for the, uh, uh, the patient is here for the visit. Um, from the main calendar section or from their chart, you can go ahead and, and there's an option to utilize the appointment status. So checked in, um, checked out, all these. So we'll go ahead and say checked in. and But you don't have to use that. Totally optional, but it's there if you'd like. And then, all right, so as a first step, let's go ahead and add in the patient's vitals. So uh, everything from uh, temperature down to glucose or just the normal ones that are included, you can include custom vitals in there, but once you enter in those vitals, then they'll go into the vitals and stats section, and these will be graphed over time and, and everything like that. Uh, for pediatric patients, there uh, are growth charts uh, built in as well, and it's the WHO growth charts from ages zero to two, and the CDC growth charts from ages two on up. All right, so we'll go back, and after we've added in the uh, vitals, let's go ahead and uh, add in the note. So there's a lot of different ways to uh, handle notes. There's um, a lot of uh, options for creating your own macros or templates. So say we go over here to the macro section, um, you can create your own um, uh, default templates for uh, various office visits. Um, you can also pull uh, in from the community's macros, uh, community macro section from other docs. So uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you can search for uh, other templates from other docs and just add those to your account. Um, but say we want to go ahead and use one of those. If we go into a patient's chart and we want to use the hashtag sample, so that's the hashtag is what you put in front of the shortcut and hit enter. Then it populates in all this patient's information based on the a macro a template and everything there. So uh, of course you can always dictate uh, notes or uh, you know, free text or anything if it's something really quick. But the uh, we also have um, AI charting features included as well. So what that allows you to do is you can uh, record the visit with the patient through just say the voice memos app on your phone or any other uh, voice recording app. And then you can attach that to the patient's chart as an attachment. And then what it'll do is it will transcribe the visit. So here's just an example one. And, and then from that visit, you can click the AI button to have it uh, generate a SOAP note based on the transcription from the audio. So we go ahead and process with AI, puts in the note. Uh, these asterisks will put things in bold. Um, there's text formatting uh, in there as well. Uh, and then there's all sorts of other options. You can use some of the AI macros, hashtag AI, to have it search for possible ICD-10 codes or differential diagnoses, and uh, put those in there as well. Process with AI, and then just add your note. Now you can take this uh, a step further and you can add in, um, you can create basically default templates on how you want your AI notes to look. So certain things at the top, certain things in italics and bold, certain sections in bullet points, certain things um, uh, bolded, things like that. So uh, those are all included um, and uh, at no extra charge. The uh, AI, there's also an AI option up here to uh, generate referral. So um, you can just search for the specialty. We'll just say, um, so 
to the example. And then go ahead and, and have it generate a referral from there. And then it'll give you the option to go ahead and send the facts right from the patient's chart. Of course, this is just a test patient, but, um, and then you can send that right away. And then, or there's a summarize option, maybe good if you have somebody that is covering um, while you're away and somebody just needs a quick summary of the, of the patient that they're gonna be seeing that day. So uh, there are some options for uh, patient self-scheduling. You can invite patients to self-schedule uh, where they have options to pick from uh, times on their on your calendar. You can restrict that as well. Um, there's also a patient hub, uh, that, which is a web-based version of the uh, iOS app or Android app. And from there, patients can um, schedule self-schedule. Uh, if you turn those options on, you can disable those if you don't want it on. Um, they can uh, manage their billing, uh, view invoices, and then any um, sort of uh, health tracking devices that they have uh, attached to their account. So uh, in the vitals and stats section, you can, um, actually we'll go on this one, you can uh, invite patients to link up a, a health tracking device. So uh, basically they'll just get an email and um, they'll have an option to connect their health device and they can connect to any one of these, um, you know, blood pressure cuffs, glucometers, scales, uh, fitness trackers, things like that. Uh, and of course, uh, anything that connects to uh, Apple, uh, Apple's health kit syncs to the patient app, which syncs to their chart. So if they have an Apple watch or anything like that, um, that can sync to their uh, chart as well through the Apple health kit. So um, that makes it easy to uh, track certain metrics like step or sleep, uh, calories, anything that they're, you know, inputting or tracking on a regular basis. Okay. So um, next we've got, uh, let's look at lab. So there's a direct interfaces set up with Quest and LabCorp for, so you can order labs, um, uh, bill for the labs and receive results back in the patient's chart as well. Um, they're all set up for the client bill rates to where the lab will bill you directly for everything that you order. And, and in turn, you bill the patient separately, but you'll get extremely discounted rates on, uh, labs. So, uh, you know, CBC is like $1.69, A1C is like $2.25, and things like that. The results will uh, come back in a way that uh, allow you to trend them. So you can trend results, um, and then you can even put some of those, there's uh, shortcuts for trending certain lab results that you can put into your templates. So then it, it will automatically pull in their last A1C results or anything like that. So you can really go, uh, you know, pretty deep, uh, you know, it, embedded uh, with your macros based with based on lab data and stuff like that. Um, you can also have those graphed uh, over time uh, as well. So if there are certain metrics or certain lab uh, tests that you want graphed, those will automatically show up in the patient uh, vitals and stats section as well. Um, there is an option to connect with uh, labs outside of Quest or LabCorp and that goes through our partners at lk.com and they uh, help bridge the gap to like hundreds of labs. So if there's a local or regional lab, uh, you know, in your area that you would like to connect with, um, there are some options with that as well. But Quest and LabCorp are, are the most popular just because they have you know, so many locations uh, spread out. So, um, and then for prescribing, um, there is an option to uh, uh, manage your own in-house pharmacy. So you can uh, put things into your uh, inventory here uh, based on NDC number or, or non-NDC number. Uh, basically anything that would require a prescription or maybe over the counter. And uh, once you've got that in there, uh, you can prescribe from your inventory. So let's say that we were going to um, search for amoxicillin. You would search, find the one that says uh, stock and then whatever you have in stock. And then we'll just go ahead and quickly add it in. All right. And then once you go to uh, dispense this prescription, it will uh, bring up the prescription bottle uh, label and um, as well as the, with all the legal information required, and it will put the uh, cost for that prescription on the patient's invoice, and it will update the uh, inventory amount that you had based on whatever you prescribed. So it makes it very easy to manage your own in-house pharmacy. Um, uh, uh, all states, but a handful allow that to allow uh, for in-house dispensing. Um, so it makes it very easy to get low cost meds for uh, patients. And then um, if you need to, uh, there's an option if you need to consult with a specialist, 
There are um, uh, built-in specialists included in here. So that way you can uh, basically do like a paid curbside consult with a specialist. And the it's a peer-to-peer -peer consult. So like say you needed a derm consult. Uh, we use Dr. Payne a lot in our practice. You can start a consult with them. It'll allow you to set up a, a number of things that you want to share with the uh, specialist so they can review it. And, and then it ultimately gets paid for uh, by the patient. So uh, it makes it easy to do a quick uh, a, a check with another specialist. And um, since they're, they're, these docs can work across state lines because there's no patient interaction, so there's no practice of medicine. It's all educational because you're dealing directly with the doc and they're never interacting with the patient. So it uh, makes it easy to uh, uh, reach out to specialists if your local endocrinologist is booked for months or something. Uh, at least you can do an online consult with somebody uh, there. So, um, and then uh, there's lots of other uh, aspects. Uh, there's company billing where you can set up uh, an employer that's going to pay for their uh, employees' memberships. Uh, you know, lots of different reports and graphs and, and everything like that. Um, on the uh, prescriptions, uh, one other thing I'll mention is there is an option to set up the electronic prescribing of controlled substances. And so that will, um, uh, some states it's required to use uh, an e-prescribe uh, system. If you were to prescribe through here for something that wasn't in your pharmacy, that would go uh, be delivered as an electronic fax. I, there's, I know there's still uh, both electronic, but the ERX goes through uh, a different pathway that connects with the larger SureScripts uh, network and things on the back end. So uh, there's an, uh, there is a fee to set up the e-prescribing for controlled substances. It is optional, but it's $475 for the first year and then $400 per year after that. And so that can all be set up from right within Atlas and uh, integrated. And, and you'll go through some identity checks and things like that to uh, complete it. But then after that, you'll be able to electronically prescribe uh, controlled substances. So... Um, and then, um, uh, but always happy to explore uh, other questions or go deeper. If anybody has uh, any questions, just be sure to uh, reach out and let us know. Uh, just to cover the pricing, it is $300 per month per clinician. So MD, uh, DO, NP, or PA. And the software is free until you launch. So we can always extend your trial out beyond uh, your 30-day uh, date. So if you say, oh, I'm going to be opening in three or four months, we would always extend your uh, trial out to your launch date. And then there's no setup fee, uh, no maintenance fee, uh, no long-term contracts. Everything is all month to month. And uh, any nurse or staff users are included for free. So uh, it's just the $300 uh, per clinician per month. And uh, we also have a referral program. So if you were referred to um, Atlas by somebody that uses Atlas in their practice, then you both get a free month on top of that. So uh, the, the doc who referred you, they would have a referral code in their account, but if not, we can always set it up and, and add your uh, referral credit on the back end afterwards. And then we have a number of other features or um, additional services that are included. Uh, we have a free lawyer on staff for helping set up any uh, patient agreements, maybe reviewing a, your current employer contract, or if you're getting ready to sign a lease, maybe review the lease agreement and things like that. We have a free uh, pharmacist on staff for medication related questions, a free cardiologist for EKG overreads, and a free radiologist for um, ordering questions, but also second opinions. So um, I hope that helps. But if you have any questions, please reach out to support at atlas.md or you can reach out to me direct, Kirk, K I R K, at atlas.md. Thank you.